Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze. In this video, we're going to explore a really unique telescope mount from Ioptron, the Sky Hunter. This mount appears to be designed for both visual observing and astrophotography. A lot of people email me asking about portable go-to telescopes for visual observing. Then they hint that they might someday want to transition from visual observing to astrophotography. Now previously in this special case, I've been recommending the AZ GTI mount. Now when used for astrophotography, you needed to buy the wedge and counterweight. Now you also needed to get a few more fittings and connectors from the hardware store to really get this to work. But for me, it worked out great. Then I learned about this mount and I had to check it out. So I called Nicholas at All Star Telescope and asked if he had one he could lend me, and he did. And for anyone else who is here in Canada, like me, definitely check out All Star Telescope. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that they're the fastest growing telescope store in Canada. They definitely have the nicest website. Well, let's get this mount out of the box and see what it can do. This is Learn to Stargaze. Hey, Mrs. Stargaze, can I borrow your kitchen? What for? Well, we've got a telescope mount to review. How many does this make? I don't know, probably 20. Can, can I have some more telescopes? Only if you get rid of one or two first. <laughs> All right. Bye. Now that I've got permission to use the kitchen, let's open up the boxes and put this mount together. Just the tripod. Just put a dent in our floor. Oops. All right, well, this is great. So it looks like we do have the wedge here. We've got USB cord. Here's our counterweight. And here is the mount itself. And I can tell right away that this is quite a bit lighter than the AZ GTI. If we want to add a telescope, I don't believe we need to use the counterweight in AZ mode. That's for EQ mode. So to convert the mount to EQ mode, Guess what we'll do here, rotate that vertically, and then we can start setting the mount to our latitudes. So this big knob on the back allows us to go up to our latitude. We would add counterweight. Okay, so to balance the telescope in EQ mode, what we're gonna do, yeah, so we would adjust the counterweight and it looks like it's pretty good there. Okay, now it's time to connect the mount to our phone. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn the mount on. Now they ask you to do a full charge and this mount charges via USB. So with the mount turned on, we should see it set up its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, so the hotspots appeared and the name is sh underscore 2C5D6E, so we're gonna click on that. Okay, now I've downloaded the app for iOptron. It's called Commander Lite in this case. So the app is gonna ask you to connect in what looks like Chinese and then it'll switch to English. We're gonna hit connect, okay. We're connected. Now I'm gonna hit the time and date option. We're gonna sync uh, the device time to the mount and we're gonna sync the device, that's your phone, location to the mount. Okay, so now it knows where we are and I think we can now test if, we're, if we have control. All right, it looks like we have control of the mount from the phone. We're gonna control the mount from Sky Safari instead. So we're gonna open Sky Safari Pro. Now we need to connect Sky Safari Pro or Sky Safari to the mount. So what we're gonna do is go to menu, go to settings. We're gonna scroll down to telescope, presets, add preset, I've already done that. So now we're just gonna edit preset now first, we're gonna select the type of mount. This is an equatorial go-to German. We're gonna scroll down to ioptron CEM120 slash GM28. Okay, so select that, hit next. We're gonna check the connection, connection verified. Now we need to make sure the IP address is 1010100254 and that the port number is 8899. Hit next, save the preset, hit X out of here. And now, if we select Mercury, for example, because it's during the day, we can 
Hopefully, slew over to Mercury. Go to. All right, it worked. The telescope is slewing over to Mercury. All right, it's nighttime and we have the Ioptron Skyhunter mount connected to a four inch refractor telescope. So the way you polar align this mount, at least for visual observations, is with a hole that runs through this axis here. And you look through here and you'll see the hole and what you need to do is see if you can center the North Star in that little hole. So I noticed something interesting. I couldn't find an option in the Sky Hunter app to switch the telescope mount from EQ mode to AZ mode. So not sure what's going on there. Basically, we're just gonna go into Sky Safari. So I've clicked on Jupiter and let's hit go to and see if it gets there. Okay, this actually looks pretty close. I realize we slew the telescope using these up and down arrows here on the side of the Sky Safari window. I like to stargaze without my glasses. And we can see Jupiter in the telescope. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna hit align and align the telescope to Jupiter. As you can see, we just did a meridian flip to get the telescope over to Saturn. And it actually got pretty close, maybe within two or three degrees. But now that we've got two targets programmed in, Jupiter and Saturn, let's try to get to a third target without having to slew the telescope. Let's try to go to Albireo, which is a double star, and Cygnus. Here we go, are we on target? Yes, it's in there. So it's off to the side a little bit. If we were at a higher magnification, I would have had to slew over to the star. So now let's center Albireo, and then we'll have three stars in the database. Okay, now let's try Blagodar Cluster M15, which might be a little hard to see in these light fluted skies and the fact that my porch lights are on. Oh, rather high in the sky too. Yeah, it's in there. Not quite centered, but it's there. Okay, I think we now have a pretty good idea how this mount is going to perform for visual observations. Now let's switch over to astrophotography and see how it does. Well, after spending several hours trying to connect the telescope with the ASI Air to this mount, you're totally unsuccessful. ZWO has a solution for the ASI Air Pro not connecting to the mount. Well, that didn't work for me. When I put the SD card into the ASI Air, it stopped working. So we started filming this video in mid-fall and now it's the middle of January. It's like minus seven out here. Well, I cut the mount working for astrophotography and we actually have clear skies. Special thanks to All Star Telescope for sending me an ASI Air Mini. I realized that the ASI Air Pro that I usually use was not compatible with the Sky Hunter mount. Thanks to Simon Liu on Reddit for the process to connect the ASI Air to the mount. Without these tips and tricks, I wouldn't have been able to figure this out. Pause the video now for instructions on how to connect the mount to the ASI Air. While it was relatively easy to get a good polar alignment, guiding has been around two arc seconds, which is not nearly as good as with my normal setup. But while I was waiting for Orion to come out from behind that tree, I took this image of the California Nebula. And as you can see, there are no star trails, so I can't really complain about the guiding. Now let's move over to the most popular target, the Orion Nebula, and let's see how we do. <laughs> the dog is just running circles around the telescope here. So to go to the target, we're gonna go in preview mode and I'll just search for M42. And now the telescope will slew over to that target. All right, with the target centered, I'm gonna wait for a second for the guiding to catch up. You can see the Orion Nebula centered here. So to take the image, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to live, go into the settings, and I've previously selected flats, darks, and biases that match the temperature and exposure settings of the exposure that we want. Save that. All right, so when I'm ready to go, I'm gonna hit this button here 
and it will start taking exposures. All right, so we let the telescope capture light on the Orion Nebula for about an hour. We got 15 three minute exposures and not bad. We averaged two arc seconds of guiding throughout the whole thing and the stars are round, so I can't really complain. The next step is to export the file into Photoshop, make some final tweaks and we'll call it a night. What do you think about this, Mrs. Stargaze? It's beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Ioptron Skyhunter mount. Special thanks to All Star Telescope for sending me the mount and the ASIR Mini. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. Please subscribe to Learn to Stargaze so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.